Hello, my name is Betty, and I welcome you to our online pondering service presented by the Dunville Worship Community, where everyone who wishes to have a time of prayer, music, and pondering are welcome. You can find other spiritual materials such as music and Bible trivia on our Facebook page, Dunville Worship, and my YouTube channel, Betty Fox NL. As it says in Matthew 18.20, For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there also. So be assured that God is here with us, no matter where we are in the world. Now, let me introduce you to our circle of friends. As we light our candle within our circle of friends, we are reminded that Jesus lights the way along our spiritual path. And the circle of friends reminds us that we are not alone, as the Spirit connects us one to another. Now, let us sing our first hymn, We Are One. Will you join me in our call to worship? The Divine Spirit calls us to worship. We will put our worries on the back burner. We rejoice in the opportunity to be still, to pray, and to praise. We are glad of the chance to join our spirit with others while we worship. We are encouraged by the scripture stories of compassion. We are challenged to find fulfillment as we put faith into action. The driving spirit has called you to worship. Rejoice and be glad. Opening prayer. Holy Spirit, be with us today. Wrap us in your love. Help us to feel your warmth. We welcome the warmth of God's love. Like the sun that does his work happily every day, help us to do your work. Remind us of the blessings surrounding us so that we may be a blessing to others. We delight 
in sharing the warmth of God's love. When the shadows of evil drift into our minds, be the breeze that pushes them away. Allow smiles and gratitude to shine from us that we know that God's love is warmth, a warmth that we want to share. And now let us join Yvonne in singing, Jesus' hands were kind hands. Join me in our confession. Merciful God, time after time we turn to you with confessions, trusting in your forgiveness. We know our very weakness. Some of us are burdened with the load we are carrying, while others of us are aware of the guilt we bear. Receive our confession and set us free. Let us take a moment of silent reflection. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. And God, is always willing to forgive. Our words of assurance. God's love is so all-encompassing that forgiveness is granted to all who turn away from the path to sin. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Prayer of Illuminations, will you join me in this prayer? Encouraging God, open our hearts to hard words and deep truths. Nudge us with your spirit to recognize the message you have for us today. Inspire us with your love to take your message into our hearts and into our lives. Amen. Our scripture reading today is taken from Genesis 45 verses 1 to 15. Joseph couldn't hold himself in any longer. Keeping up a front before all his attendants, he cried out, leave, clear out everybody, leave. So there was no one with Joseph when he identified himself to his brothers. But his sobbing was so violent that the Egyptians couldn't help but hear him. The news was soon reported to the Pharaoh's palace. Joseph spoke to his brothers. I am Joseph. Is my father really still alive? But his brothers couldn't say a word. They were speechless. They couldn't believe what they were hearing and seeing. Come closer to me, Joseph said to his brothers. They came closer. I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But don't feel badly. Don't blame yourself for selling me. God was behind it. 
God sent me here ahead of you to save lives. There has been a famine in the land now for two years, and the famine will continue for five more years, neither plowing nor harvesting. God sent me on ahead to pave the way and make sure there was a remnant in the land to save your lives in an amazing act of deliverance. So you see, it wasn't you who sent me here, but God. He set me in place as a father to Pharaoh, put me in charge of his personal affairs, and make me ruler of all of Egypt. Hurry back to my father. Tell him, your son Joseph says, I'm master of all of Egypt. Come as fast as you can and join me here. I'll give you a place to live in Goshen, where you'll be close to me. You, your children, your grandchildren, your flocks, your herds, and everything else you can think of. I'll take care of you there completely. There are still five more years of famine ahead. I'll make sure all of your needs are taken care of. You and everyone connected with you, you won't want for a thing. Look at me. You can see for yourself, and my brother Benjamin can see for himself that it is me, my own mouth, telling you all of this. Tell my father all about the high position I hold in Egypt. Tell him everything you've seen, but don't take all day. Hurry up and get my father down here. Then Joseph threw himself on his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept on his neck. He then kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Only then were his brothers able to talk with him. Our Holy Scriptures, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Creator God, we give you thanks for your holy words. We thank you for giving it meaning and life and teaching us so much. Now I pray, God, that the words of my lips and the meditation of all of our hearts will be pleasing to you as you continue to teach us. Amen. Our scripture readings over the past few weeks reads like a mystery novel, and I enjoy reading them. If you get a chance, read the full story of Joseph, starting with Genesis 37. We start with the love of a father for one of his sons, which sets up envy in his elder brothers. Envy, which is one of the deadly sins, leads the brothers from first throwing him into a cistern and then selling him to merchants who were on their way to Egypt. During this time, I envision Joseph first feeling deep despair of having his brothers trying to slowly kill him by starvation and throwing him into the cistern. To hope and relief when they haul him back out, only to be plunged once again into despair at them selling him into slavery. Talk about a roller coaster. It would have been easy to want to give up, turn against God and everything else. But sometimes good things come out of our worst of times. Through the jigs and reels of good times and bad times, he was noticed by the Pharaoh and with God's help told the Pharaoh what his dream meant. The meaning being that there would be seven years which would be good 
and then seven years there would be famine. Hearing this, the Pharaoh put Joseph in charge of looking after the crops and herds in the good years, and then ensuring that there was enough put aside for the lean years, and then rationing them food out to ensure that everyone had enough. Back on the old homestead with his father and brothers, things were getting pretty dire, so that eventually his father sent the brothers to Egypt looking for food. When they arrived and had to go before Joseph, they did not recognize him, although Joseph recognized them. What would you have done after all that you had suffered at their hands? Being thrown into the cistern, then being sold into slavery. Even though he had it pretty good, he was taken away from his father, whom he loved, and his younger brother, who was the only true brother being born from the same mother. How would you have treated them? I would have been tempted to have them whipped and thrown into jail. But that's not what Jesus teaches us. De Jesus teaches us to forgive seven times seven, to turn the other cheek. But when someone does me dirty intentionally, that is extremely hard to do. I sometimes, especially when I really want to strike out and take refuge in Hebrews 10.30, God has warned us that he'll hold us to account and make us pay. He was quite explicit. Vengeance is mine and I won't overlook a thing, and God will judge his people. Nobody getting by with anything, believe me. It's kind of comforting to know that God will seek justice for me, even though I may never see it. I take Comfort that in the discovery of who Joseph really was, that his brothers had an epiphany of how Joseph must have felt when they did what they did to him. And yet, he showed them mercy. It takes a really big person to be that forgiving. It takes a person who loves God and can see God working in their lives. Is this something that you are in tune with? Seeing God working in your life through both the good and the not so good? May it be so as we continue our spiritual journey. Amen. Let us pray. In the heat of summer, a breeze comes refreshing, restorative, relaxing. It feels like your breath, O oh God, a blessing with the fragrant flowers painted in rainbow colors, vibrant and alive. Tasting of sweet strawberries and tart rhubarb, whispering the fluid motion of gentle waves for that breath, for that blessing, for that restoration, we give silent thanks. As we pray, we remember, however, times when that breeze strengthens in force. In the shelter of our homes, a gale, a storm is still frightening, furious, forceful. It feels like a threat, a challenge not only to life, but to faith. The chaos 
and tragedy of the scenes we encounter in the news, situations playing out around the world that bring heartache and pain. The stormy threat comes in drought and wildfires, tropical storms and flooding. As we worry and wonder, there are times we feel abandoned. There are times we feel helpless and out of control. Each concern feels like another crushing wave in the storms of life. We yearn for your presence. We need to be saved. Help us as we take a moment of silent prayer. In our prayer, in our community with you, O oh God, we find those storms calm, those waves subside, those worries washed away. The still point comes as you equipped us with what we need to reach out to others. The breeze whispers again, but it whispers a challenge and it whispers of opportunity. That is why we are gathered to be gifted in Christ's name with what we need to bring hope and possibility even within the storms which will always arise. It is indeed our blessing and our hope. Thank you for the direction and for the encouragement to make a difference. Amen. Precious Lord, Take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I'm tired, I'm weak, I'm worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to Thank you for joining your spirit to all who are and will view this video. If this video has been please blessing to you, please hit the like button. And if you want to keep up to date with other videos, please hit the subscribe button. We give thanks to all of our blessings. And I hope you will join me in our offering prayer. 
you call us to dedicate our lives to you, gracious God, to proclaim the good news to others, and to be your healing touch in a broken world. Our offering in words and deeds are dedicated gifts of ourselves to the service of your works. Amen. Will you join me in our commissioning? Go forth as God's people. We have been called. Go forth as disciples of Christ. We have been called and we have answered yes. Go forth, strengthened by the Spirit. We go, equipped to show God's love and ready to be the good news. Amen. Thanks again for tuning in, and I hope to see you again next week. Take care. Be blessed.